Good morning and welcome to First Memorial. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please draw your attention to the Easter Sunday theme verse from Romans 6, verse 4. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And now please join me by standing to sing hymn of praise number 151, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Please stand to sing number 151. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints. Let us confess our sins to God and ask his forgiveness. Let us together pray. Almighty God, in Christ Jesus, am I doing something wrong? I skipped Rachel. I did skip Rachel. Bad Alan. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Everybody's apologizing today. I'm so eager. Yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting day. Christ is risen. risen <laughs> Hallelujah. The Apostle Paul writes, In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. 
When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? <coughs> oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Sliding down to the prayer, we started falsely. Almighty God, in Christ Jesus, we have been raised to new life, but we often turn back to our own ways. We follow our own selfish desires instead of walking in the ways of our Lord. We listen to the temptations of the world instead of gladly hearing your word. Have mercy on us and forgive us. Lead us by your spirit to walk in newness of life. Jesus suffered and died on the cross to take away our sins. He was raised in triumph over death. In him we have forgiveness and life. So I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, set your cross before us and lead us to walk in newness of life. While we're standing together, let us put our voices back together to say what we believe using the words of chapter 9 of the Scots Confession, which is timely for today. That our Lord Jesus offered himself voluntary sacrifice unto his Father for us, that he suffered contradiction of sinners, that he was wounded and plagued for our transgressions, that he was Lamb of God, was condemned in the presence of an earthly judge, that we should be absolved before the judgment seat of our God, that he suffered not only the cruel death of the cross, which was accursed by the sentence of God, but also that he suffered for a season the wrath of his Father, which sinners had deserved. But yet we avow that he remained the only well-beloved and blessed Son of his Father. Even in the midst of his anguish and torment, which he suffered in body and soul, to make full atonement for the sins of his people, from this we confess and avow that there remains no other sacrifice for sin. Amen. We believe that God loved the world so much that God sent his only son so that all who believed, received him into their hearts would not have to die forever, but could have everlasting life. You can count on that. Such love brings us peace as nothing else can. Let us not keep this peace to ourselves, but proclaim to others our words and deeds. Without moving from where you now stand, please take the next few moments to share a warm greeting and a sincere sign of God's peace with those around you. Peace. Thank you. Please be seated. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. From the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 35. 
The desert and the parched land will be glad. The wilderness will rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it will burst into bloom. It will rejoice greatly and shout for joy. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it. The splendor of Carmel and Sharon, they will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear. Your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the tongue of the dumb shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, Grass and reeds and papyrus will grow, and a highway will be there. It will be called the way of holiness. The unclean will not journey on it. It will be for those who walk in that way. Wicked fools will not go about on it. In the epistle lesson is from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live in a new life. And the gospel message today is according to Matthew, chapter 28. After the Sabbath, at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them, Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord.
Today we conclude our sermon series for this season, Guided to the Cross, with the sermon today, Guided to New Life. And today we celebrate Easter, the day of resurrection of our Lord. Today we remember where we have been, focused as we have these last many weeks of Lent on the cross of Christ. But we also take a turn now past the cross and go on to the open tomb where Jesus arose to give us new life. Easter is celebrated in the spring every year, and not by mistake. It arrives at a time when daffodils are blooming, grass is turning green, and trees are budding. But it's not time to rake leaves yet. New life is sprouting up in us, spiritually, this day, because Christ has risen to new life for us. We are forgiven by Christ. We are renewed in our love for God. We are refreshed with sure hope that we too will rise one day, as Jesus has today, to join him in heaven, where new life will spring forth eternally, for us all. The turning from the death of the cross to the life of the open tomb is depicted in the Bible when it says Mary Magdalene went to the tomb on Easter morning while it was still dark. That's in John 20. We as the people of God are moving out of darkness into his marvelous light. What does new life look like for the women at the tomb? As the Bible tells us, it is earth-shaking. There was an earthquake at the tomb, and it was powerful. The heavy stone at the entrance to the grave had been unexplainably rolled away. It connects heaven to earth. An angel appears before them to tell them that Jesus is risen. New life is a little scary at first for the women. But the angel assures them that they should not be afraid. The risen Jesus himself stands in the midst of the women, newly alive, and their initial response is to take hold of him and worship him. What does new life in Christ look like, guided by what happened on the first Easter? As people guided by Easter, we are people filled with the light of the Lord. We are people whose foundation is rock-solidly based on the death and resurrection of Jesus. We are a people who are no longer afraid of the future because we know the future belongs to Jesus. We are a people who reach out to be with Jesus and who seek to hold on to him to help us in our lives. We are a people who worship and praise our Savior for the life he now gives us to lead. We, like the women at the tomb, are compelled to go forth and tell Jesus, to, and tell people, excuse me, that Jesus is alive, and he is alive in each one of us. Easter energy makes it possible for us to greet each new day with confidence that the Jesus who went to the cross and grave for us will guide us on to witness to others about what we have seen and heard and experienced regarding our living Lord so that they can see, hear, and experience Jesus too. Jesus continues to guide us in this new life we lead. He takes us to places where sadness and hardship reign that we may spread joy and gladness in him in its midst. He leads us to places of anger and hostility, to bring about peace and harmony, to replace it. He sends us to the lonely, forsaken, and forgotten places to fill them with his presence and his great love for us all. The journey of life as an Easter person, which is what you are, what I am, never remains in the past but always looks forward to better times on the horizon. Did you catch that? No matter how bad it gets, there's good stuff coming. 
and God will not let the bad stuff win. When hard times come in the meantime, we are then able to look beyond the trouble of the moment to see the triumph of heaven. Nothing on this earth can take us away from the paradise that awaits us. Jesus makes it very apparent to his disciples about where their thought should be centered. Let not your hearts be troubled, he says. Believe in God also, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many rooms. Some translations use the word mansions. I guess it depends on what you're used to. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go, if I prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Jesus lays it out for us in these words. Don't look down, look up. Keep in mind the glorious end goal of life together with him forever. Living new life in Christ awakens us to glimpses of the promises that await us. We see the hand of God at work in our relationship with fellow believers that we might focus more on our common faith together. We notice the blessing of random acts of kindness which point to the Father's deep and lasting love for us. We feel the strength from Jesus to persevere in difficult days. We recognize when people smile and laugh and find joy in the moment. We have peace of mind, even when things are not going exactly how we would expect them to go or want them to go. There is life at the end of every tunnel we find ourselves in because Jesus is there. There is happiness after every hardship because Jesus is there. There is a gift around every corner because Jesus is there. And he is alive, living and breathing new life into you every day. Therefore, Easter is not just a day or a season or a moment. It is a way of life. Easter is a way of life and a state of mind and a reason for being, a force that keeps filling us with good things to ponder and prepare for. Life is not something to ever take for granted, but life is something that is granted to each one of us to live with vigor for the victory already won. Jesus propels us in our words and deeds to be both followers of him and guides to others. His story becomes our story. So we need to be ready at every turn to share our story with those around us so that his story may be known most of all. In the telling of Christ's story in our story, we help people take part in the new life of Christ, the one that he has shared with us for our lives and the lives of those around us. St. Paul gives us a framework for how to present Christ's story in his story, Paul's story. In 1 Corinthians 15, he said, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive when this was written, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me, Paul, the 13th apostle. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, 
I am what I am, and his grace towards me was not in vain. Every day becomes then an alleluia, a way of saying, praise the Lord for a life overflowing with beauty and bounty and grace. Let us greet each morning as an Easter morning from now on. You all remember the Avery and Marsh song we sang in the 60s? Every morning is Easter morning from now on. Your memory's as bad as mine, but I didn't have to look that one up. I took that into my heart, and it's still there. Let us greet each morning as an Easter morning from now on, and let the fresh start given to us by Christ encourage and invigor us to shine with his salvation and glow with the glory that he provides. So this Easter day, be guided to the open tomb. Be guided to the risen Christ, and be guided to a life that is lived to honor and glorify the Lord of life forever. Amen. On behalf of the elders, I tell you that we are grateful to have you with us as we worship together on this Easter Sunday. And we hope that you will be stewardship partners with us in our ministry here and around the world as you have been partners with us in this worship, whether here in our sanctuary or somewhere safe or more convenient to you on your computer. If you worship with us on your computer, and are able and willing, please consider prayerfully mailing an offering to our church office this week so that you can be part of the ministry that goes forward, mostly unseen, from this place. With compassion for our needs, the Risen One stands beside us, calling our names. Let us, with that same mercy, bring forth tithes and offerings to relieve the suffering of this world and to proclaim far and wide the good news of resurrection. Let us together pray. Holy God, we cannot measure them all. You give us life itself and the power to befriend our companions in this world. Bless these gifts for the sake of those in need. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, one God, now and forever. Amen. I believe in the sun. I believe song join the one 
There is no joy quite like seeing, recognizing actually, our Lord Jesus as we sometimes do in the Christ-like words or actions of another. In the hoped-for answer to a desperate prayer, in the tingling all over feeling we get while singing or hearing a favorite hymn, or in the emotion which dwells up in us when a particular verse of scripture touches our memories or our hearts. Once again, our Savior invites us to this table for the same reason, so that we might see him, recognize him, in the Lord's intervention of history, symbolized by the unleavened bread of Passover and that ritual's third cup. Indeed, we are all invited to this table. Won't you partake? Please unite your heart with mine as I pray. Great God of blessing upon blessing, in every age since Abraham, your prophets have called your children back from their ways to follow your ways, teaching us to live by your holy word and to show forth your love and mercy to all. At the appointed time in history, you sacrificed your son on our behalf so that the altars of this world could forever grow cold from their vain temporary atonements and be replaced with tables of holy fellowship and communion to be cherished for eternity. Make our hearts ready to receive you in spirit and in truth, O God. Amen. Please remember on the night of his arrest, while he was at table with his disciples celebrating the Passover feast, he took the symbolic bread in the course of the ritual, gave thanks to God for it, and shared it with his friends in that room as he shares it with his friends in this room and many others this morning. His words were to the effect, from now on, let this bread remind you of my sacrificing my body for you. In the same manner as he had taken the bread when it got to the symbol of the third cup, he took that and gave thanks for it and shared it with his friends. This time his words were to the effect, from now on, let this cup represent the new covenant sealed in my blood to be poured out for you. And when you drink it, remember how much I loved you. The feast of God for the people of God. If you're unfamiliar with the hardware this morning, um, take the plastic uh, communion cup that you picked up when you came in the door, turn it upside down, peel off the sticker on the bottom and take the bread, partake of it, then turn it right side up, peel the top off the chalice, and have a taste of the cup. We thank you, O oh God, for this holy meal of remembrance, shared in the spirit with every other believer of every age and place. We thank you for those we miss dearly are also sharing in this communion today with you in heaven. So we are together in that. Send us forth to be the body of Christ in the world today. Empower our words and deeds to show forth the love of Jesus, who died so we might live abundantly and eternally. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Happy Easter. This week's birthdays are Kristen Madison, Shane Valentine, and Kim Boyer. 
And we ask for travel prayers for all who are traveling this week. And our laundry list of people that we continually pray for. Gina, Dawn, Hunter, Kendra, Karen, Kim, Irene, Sonia, Gregory, Madison, Hildegard, Sean, Lily, Nishabi, Larry, Tiffany, RJ, Benjamin, Barbara, Bennett, Peter, Henry, Dominic, Bill, Julie, Helen, Jody, Diana, Marilyn, Caroline, Catherine, Keith, Judy, Paul, Diane, Bob, Jordan, Kate, Joanne, Joan, John, Tim, Eileen, and Connor. Thank you. Uh, what is it, a bill? <laughs> you give the bill to Tom. <laughs> The two flowers in the, flower box. the two flower boxes in front. One is in memory of all church members that have passed away. I, I sorry, I'm not reading it the way you phrased it. Well, I have my own speech pattern. I'm sorry. It's nice to know. And we appreciate all of the decorations that are here today, especially that overpowering cross of flowers. I should also ask you, as a pastoral privilege, to pray for my neighbor uh, who is fighting cancer and has had a setback. Her name is Joanne, and she's been a real good friend. And I'm anxious for her, along with her family and her husband in particular. We believe, so we pray. Holy God of heaven and earth, our eyes scan the sanctuary today, taking in the inspiring seasonal symbols, which remind us of wonderful Easter worship services across the years. Believe us, Lord, when we tell you how much we have looked forward to this day and how much we have needed the boost this day brings to our spirits. But throughout generations of your followers, you have admonished us to give thanks in all things. And we have many other kinds of observations and reflections to ponder today because of the world in which we live and all its less than joyful circumstances. Even in the midst of making wonderful new memories in our holiday family gatherings and communications, Many of us feel the loss, some for the first time, of those who are no longer with us, those whom you had to call to a new home, eternal in the heavens, because they were too sick or too worn out to remain here with us. We ask you to tell them we love them and we miss them as you encounter them in your rounds throughout heaven today. Much of what we have just prayed about would be unbearable if not for the forgiveness of the sins which would otherwise weigh us down. The empty tomb marking the conquering of sin and death and the promises made which are yet to be fulfilled, promises that the bad things will not always be there and will never win out over him whose light shines and still shines in spite of Satan's darkness. So we are enabled to continue to live in the hope Jesus promises and wrap all our prayers and hopes in the prayers that we make today and every day, such as the prayer Jesus taught us when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our parting hymn today is number 123.
Jesus Christ is risen today. One, two, three. Thank each of you for being with us today. Uh, it's great to be together and to see friends we don't get to see every week. Now, may the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment of quiet reflection. Mm -hmm. 